Hi, uh, this video here is going to basically give you a summary of our 12 basic functions that you really need to understand to be able to work well in courses like Algebra 2, Pre-Calculus and definitely anything about that. So knowing uh, the features of these functions, knowing their behavior, their um, commonalities and differences is going to be extremely careful. So let's start with this. The first one is the identity function, f of x equals x. So for ever, whatever x is, the y is going to be the same exact value. So it's a line. The domain of this function is going to be all real numbers, so is range. And this function is going to be increasing all the time. And the, its x-intercept and y-intercept is going to be the origin. Our next function is the squaring function, f of x equals x squared. So whatever x is, the y is going to be that number squared. So the graph of that function is going to look like this. This, one is gra this graph is called a parabola. Uh, the domain here is also all real numbers and the range, my apologies, the range is going to be from 0 to um, infinity. Okay. So, be careful when you copy and paste sometimes. This function is decreasing first from negative infinity to zero and it's going to be increasing from zero to infinity. And uh, this one also has the x-intercept and the y-intercept at the origin and this function is going to have what's called the absolute minimum. It's the absolute lowest point on the graph. And this one is called the vertex. Our next function is the cubing function. It's f of x equals x cubed. Take a look. And uh, with this one, um, this is what the, the graph looks like. Um, this function's domain and range is going to be all real numbers. And this function, similar to line, is going to be increasing on the entire domain and its x-intercept and its y-intercept is going to be uh, the origin. This graph is called something that's called a point of inflection. If you look at this graph, it's rising and it kind of bends, kind of slowing down in how fast it goes up and then it um, turns around and starts going up faster and faster. Uh, this is a separate discussion for your calculus course. We don't deal with that, but it's a good thing to know that there is such thing as point of inflection. <clears throat> uh, the next one is the square root function. The square root function is the, uh, f of x equals square root of x. So this one here is going to be restricted in its domain because you cannot use any value of x here as far as, you know, when it comes to graphing. We're not talking about just taking square roots of negative numbers, we're talking about taking the square root of a negative number and being able to plot it. So the, the domain here is going to be from 0 inclusive to infinity. The range here is going to be from 0 inclusive to infinity. This function is going to increase on its entire domain. It's going to have uh, its x and y intercepts at the origin also. And this one's going to have the absolute minimum at 0, 0, because this will, point will be the lowest point on the graph. The natural logarithmic function, f of x equals ln x. Uh, the graph of the function is going to look like this. So the domain here is going to be, you can only use positive values of x for nat natural log. So the domain is going to be from 0, not including 0, to infinity. But the range of this, this function is going to be from negative infinity to infinity because this side is going to continue dropping forever as x gets closer to zero from the right. And over here it's going to be rising. It's going to be rising relatively slow, but it will be rising. So this function is increasing on its entire domain. This function is going to have an x-intercept at, at the point 1, 0. But this function will not ever cross the y-axis. So you have a vertical asymptote here at x equals 0, which is the y-axis. The reciprocal function, um, this one is f of x equals 1 over x. So the domain here is going to be broken over 0. 
you cannot use zero as the value of x because you cannot divide by zero. So the domain will be from negative infinity to zero, union zero to infinity. And the same thing goes with range here. This graph has what we call an infinite discontinuity at x equals zero. Uh, this graph is actually called a hyperbola and you will probably learn about that later. This function is going to be increasing, I'm sorry, it's going to be decreasing decreasing um, but you cannot say it's decreasing from negative infinity to infinity because the, uh, the there are two branches here and they're separated over zero so when you say decreasing it's gonna have to go from negative infinity to zero and then again from zero to infinity this function has no x-intercept no y-intercept you have a vertical asymptote x equals zero just like uh, the previous function did but you also have a horizontal asymptote y equals zero here because what happens as we start going farther and further to the left this graph is going to start getting closer and closer to zero from the bottom but we'll never cross that and the same thing happens on the right hand side a natural exponential function f of x equals e to the x so this graph is going to be defined on uh, for all real numbers so its domain is negative infinity to infinity the range here however is going to be from zero to infinity because this value will never be zero or negative so this function is going to be increasing on its entire domain it does not have any x-intercepts but it has a, has a y-intercept at the point zero one and this graph has a horizontal asymptote y equals zero because as you're going to head towards negative infinity on this side the graph is going to be approaching the x-axis closer and closer but it will never cross it or touch it the sine function so now we we're going to take a look at a couple of trigonometric functions f of x equals sine x you will probably learn more uh, this in more details later but we just need to uh, know this for now so this function is defined for all real values of x so its domain is going to be from negative infinity to infinity but this function ends up being bounded between negative 1 and 1 so it, it will never leave that range of values so its range is going to, just going to be from negative 1 to 1 it's just going to continue to oscillate between these numbers. Uh, so this function is going to be increasing and decreasing and increasing and decreasing their multiple intervals. I'm not going to get into the details here. This one also has infinitely many x-intercepts. Uh, so it's going to have a, an x-intercept at every point where the value is going to match pi n, where n is an integer. So it's going to happen at 0, pi, 2 pi, 3 pi, and then on the other side it's going to go negative pi, negative 2 pi, etc. and it's going to go on forever in both directions. It does have a y-intercept at, at the origin and as I already mentioned it is bounded between negative 1 and 1 inclusively. So the next one is the cosine function f of x equals cosine. The only difference really between sine and cosine is the horizontal shift but you'll learn that in your trig uh, class in more details we're just talking about the general behavior. Uh, so it does resemble the previous function except of a, uh, a shift in one way or another way depending on which function you're looking at. So its domain is also all real numbers, the range is also negative 1 to 1. It's also increasing and decreasing in multiple intervals. This function is going to have x-intercepts at the points that can match this, pi over 2 plus pi n, where n is an integer. So it's going to have it at pi over 2, 3 pi over 2, 5 pi over 2, 7 pi over 2, and here at negative pi over 2, negative 3 pi over 2, etc. This one has um, well, y-intercept at the point 0, 01 and also bounded as I already mentioned. Um, a little tricky function. This is the greatest integer function. There are different ways how this can be expressed. So this function is kind of unique out of all these. Uh, this one is also known as the step function because it does resemble a bunch of steps. And this function is interesting in its behavior, so what it is, the value of, of x, whatever you plug it in, it's going to give you the greatest integer that does not exceed 
a certain value. Okay, so the domain here is going to be also all real numbers because you can, x can be anything. But the range here is very interesting because the range is only going to consist of integer values. So it's actually, uh, I mentioned over here, it's a discrete set. You, so you cannot just say from negative infinity to infinity because it does not ex um, assume every value of y. It's only going to be the integers. And this graph is going to have jump discontinuity at every integer value of x. It's going to be constant, though not increasing or decreasing, but constant between two consecutive integer values, like it's constant here between negative 3 and 2, and negative 2, it's constant here between um, 0 and 1, constant here between 2 and 3. Uh, it's going to have an x-intercept at every point on this interval from 0 inclusive to 1 excluding because it actually lies on the x-axis. Its y-intercept is 0, 0 and as I already mentioned that about the, the range being the discrete set. I think we have a couple more. So then we have the, the absolute value function. And the absolute value function f of x equals absolute value of x. So whatever x is, you take the absolute value of that number and you're going to get the value. Because the absolute value cannot be negative, you will only be getting 0 and above. So this graph is going to look like this. And again, I made a, a mistake here. This one is from 0 to infinity. So the domain x can be anything, uh, but the range is going to be only from 0 and up. So this function, this function says uh, somewhat of a similar behavior to the um, quadratic function in that aspect. So the First, from negative infinity to zero, the graph is decreasing, and then from zero to infinity, it's increasing. Uh, this one also has its x-intercept and y-intercept at uh, the origin. It does have the absolute minimum at zero, zero, just like the parabola does. And this one has a sharp turn at the origin. This uh, point is also called the vertex. Okay. And the last function, uh, which you also need to know, is called the logistic function. This is the graph that is going to follow along this, and it's going to slowly increase, and it's going to start increasing faster, then it continues to increase, and then it's going to start approaching another value. X can be any number. The range here is going to be from 0 to 1, both numbers are going to be, both end values are going to be excluded. So it, it will never reach 0, it will never reach 1. It is increasing on its entire domain. It does not have any x intercepts because over here it's going to be approaching the x, um, axis but never crosses it. It does have a y intercept at the point 0, 1 half. So right there is its y intercept. And this graph has two horizontal asymptotes. That's an interesting thing about this. Uh, it has the horizontal asymptote y equals 0, and when you x heads towards negative infinity, this part is going to approach um, 0. And as x goes to positive infinity, this part of the graph is going to approach 1. So it's got uh, y equals 0 and y equals 1 as its two horizontal asymptotes. This graph also has a point of inflection. This is a type of a function that deals with uh, things uh, with uh, when you have a growth, but the growth is going to be l l bounded because of some capacity issues. Like if you put, for example, a fish in a pond, and uh, the population of fish is going to start increasing, it's not going to increase indefinitely because you have the the restriction of the pond and uh, there's going to be some food issues for the fish to continue to breed and uh, produce more and more so at some point the the capacity is going to, the the population of uh, fish is going to start approaching the you know its maximum capacity capacity so that would be that value okay but you know this function needs to be discussed in more details and i hope this was helpful